Greetings, everyone. My name is Etterville, and welcome to the finale of my Let's Play of Maho Warrior. During the last part, I completed Essor Fortress Stages 1 and 2. Now off screen, I paid, I paid a visit to the shop and purchased an E-Tank. As I realized two things, I didn't have enough money to buy a double damage item, plus I realized that having an E-Tank would increase my survivability more, more so than any other item. If I was more skilled in the game or playing it for a second time through and I wanted to speedrun this, I would buy the 2x multiplier for damage, because then I could use it to get through stages and boss fights much faster. Regardless, it's time to go through the final stage of the game, the tower. It's time to stop the evil sorceress Essor's plans on uh, assaulting the peaceful land of Eternia. So we have a lightning background over there. Oh, and we have her face over there, I, I presume. So we have the final sets of challenges, and then we'll be fighting Essor, I, I presume. Also nice music, oh, yeah, I have to time it just right so I can get it across here. Like, just as it goes up, oh, yeah, and it, but I need, I can't go, let's go against the wall. And this is gonna take a short while. Yeah, it, because of how the slow the bubble can be, it's gonna take a little bit of a while before I can get up here. Now, if this is the final stage of the game, I wonder if there's going to be Roadmaster or Magical Mistress uh, refights. After all, I see Lily's uh, mugshot over there. And I forget who... Okay, that's the that's the mugshot from the power plant. I forget what her name was there, but the boss from the power plant. And I believe in the, the last segment with the clouds, we saw... Um... Namora's uh, mugshot from the Sky Fortress. Uh, if we can only make this jump, it's kind of a tight jump, unfortunately. There we go. I really don't like these jumps, if if you know. Uh, let's try this again. Hmm, I think I need to hit the switch there. Okay, so there- okay, I can actually get over here. That's good to know. Yeah, I really don't like these tight jumps, especially because of how physics can interact with this. It's so another timing challenge, I presume. Hmm. Let's see how I get through this one. Oh, I need to shoot it twice. I see. Yeah, I see the. Difficulty is certainly ramping up a lot here. Okay, here's the mugshot from the Magma Fortress. There we go. Climb this up, climb this side. I need to rush over here to this side so I actually have enough space so I don't fall in the spikes over there. Okay, here's... I forget what her name was. Uh, Daisy from the Deep Forest. So each room is basically a, is one screen of gimmicks from the from the respective magical mystery stage. Fitting. You know, this kind of reminds me of the final stage in Doctor Wise final attack. There was one screen dedicated to each challenge of each world master. So one screen dedicated, for example, to Digital Man. Another one dedicated to um, Speed Woman, etc. Same principle over here. We have one screen dedicated to each uh, magical mistress. Although I find it kind of well, I kind of find it odd though. There's only three fortress stages. That explains why the first two stages were so long and they uh, showed they introduced different configurations of gimmicks in more fashions than I expected it to be. 
because there are only two of them instead of the usual three or four Wily Fortress stages. That's why they were long in that regard. But still, I do like it how there's one dedicated stage in the end, which dedicates one screen per each of the challenges. And to be fair, unlike the previous two stages which mixes up the gimmicks in different configurations, this ones are basically remixes of the specific challenges in the original stages overall. Which I do appreciate. Oh, I got this I got this backwards. Let me do this again. I need to get the uh, snowball on the bottom first. But I do like how th there's one the final stage remixing the original challenges in a harder variation. Quite appreciate it. In addition to the con uh, to the differing configurations of challenges taken from a multitude of cha stages fr from the in the first two SR Fortress stages, that is. Okay, here's the Deco stage. Oh, I thought I was going to make that jump. Ugh, I misjudged it. Well, at least there's a checkpoint right over here in the problem areas, or areas that you can easily die in. This time I'm going to wait for it to go all the way down. There we go. Okay, I, can't, I guess that was the last one, so we're going to, we're going to be finding Essor right now. Yep, that's the final checkpoint, so here we go then. A lot of skulls indicating that Essor is right over here. Let's see, 10 that was... Yeah, it makes sense because we had 10 bosses before, well, not counting the Edra boss. Well, there are actually 11 bosses. It's actually quite fitting there because we had the Indra boss, which is one, then eight magical mistresses, then, well, two fortress bosses. So that makes 11. Yeah, we went all the way and defeated everyone. And she's the only... She's basically like a witch due to her broomstick. And that's not how you spell pals, actually. And she apparently absorbed all the powers or something. Alright, it's time for us and our 2E tanks and try and try to defeat her. Okay, so that's her SR machine. She's basically a... Fist with a hat, a ma mage's hat. Or with scroll eyes or something. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, the fist will go in four different directions. And, well, three different directions. And the final one that stops on the ground, it will create a shockwave. Good to know. Okay, and the top ones are cannons, and it fires five balls at once. That's my fault for not paying attention, but I have infinite tries right now, so let's try doing this again. And I do like how there's one skull for each uh, boss, as I said before, for each previous boss. Alright, let's fight uh, SR Machine Phase 1. This magician hat with a fist. Yeah, this is even more strange compared to the other one, compared to most Wily machines, in my my own humble opinion. Yeah, if I I need to lure it away, that that'll make it a lot easier. The fist, that is. Uh, I I have to get on the other side in order to dodge it. Otherwise, I get caught in behind when it's uh, when she's retracting her uh, fist. Okay, phase one has been defeated, and wow. Okay, now we have all eight of the magical mistresses returning. So, with all of our co powers combined, um. Okay, then so we one shot her. Well, her machine. Okay, then. That was fast. Well, she, yeah, she is certainly powerful. She took them out individually, and now she can take all of them together with a combined strength. That's pretty... But at least we took out her machine. Alright, phase two, and we have the final boss team. Good. Okay, so... It kind of reminds me of a capsule. Yeah, this is definitely like a capsule fight. Although, with no capsule. 
And she doesn't teleport around, she just she just moves around to different areas on the screen. I kind of prefer that compared to the, the uh, Wily teleporting all over the place. Okay, she fi can fire a spread of bullets. And a bullet that a green bullet that is split into four ones. And this um, Orbanot like an orbiting pattern. Okay, and this one will guide twice. Too bad I can't fire up. And at a certain point, she can summon that lightning bolt. Thankfully, there's ample opportunity to actually hit her. But still, that's a little bit difficult to avoid. Well, that was that was very lucky on my part. Oh no, she's switching the direction. There we go, Essor has been defeated. A little bit... Okay, she was a bit easier than I expected it to be. And we now steal our broom broomstick and get out of here. Um... Okay, so I guess that broomstick is very durable. And of course, just like any of these games, Essor's Fortress Tower has been destroyed. I don't know why it was, but I presume that by killing Essor, well, the magic holding the tower up got, went away, so the entire thing collapsed. So here is Mika and all eight of the magical mistresses standing in the sunset. And of course we have happy music. So I suppose then we killed Essor, because she just blew up. And unlike all the other ro uh, magical mistresses, when we defeated them, they just flew around the room and got knocked unconscious. Essor basically... When she got defeated, she blew up just like the Roadmasters do into those eight pieces or orbs. So I suppose she's dead unless she's rebuilt by a scientist or another magical being. Oh good, and as I desired in the beginning, or one or two parts before, we actually have names for each of these enemies in the credits roll. Thank you, the Skipper1995, for adding this. And better yet, we have changing backgrounds indicating which stage that these enemies originated from. Like, we already had the enemies for originating from the original stage, and now we have the enemies from each of the individual stages. I don't think there were any new enemies introduced in the Essor Fortress stages. I suppose some of these names, like Dan Malku, are puns related to something. I know some of, the, some of the enemies' names make sense. Some of them are more manly McDiver men. <laughs> some of them are punny names, but some of them are probably puns in uh, other languages. Well, and the other names are all semi-obvious. Oh, the Orbanauts are called Rotary Shields. Well, fitting. Parapara Zappa. Hmm. Oh, Shot Zaps. They were rather annoying. Well, while the credits roll goes by, I suppose this is a good time to give my final thoughts on Maho Warrior as a whole. As I said before, this was my first impressions playthrough of this title. And truth be told, if I knew how good this game would be, and I realized this earlier before I did the first part, I would have done a post-commentary playthrough of this so that I could get through the stages without dying and better show the game's... Uh, get through the uh, game with more grace. But alas, that was in the past. And regardless, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I would like to say this game is up there with uh, Dr. Y's final attack in terms of the other games made by the Skipper 1995 slash Jordan Dell. Okay, let's start with the uh, story. Well, it's just like Mega Man, so there's really an excuse plot. But really, it's just a we have, instead of eight ma uh, Royal Masters, we have eight Magical Mistresses, and instead of Dr. Wily, we have Essor. Although in the end, we outright kill Essor from the Roadmaster explosion, it seems, unless she can revive herself. The character designs are pretty fun, uh, are pretty nice for an 8-bit style. Uh, Mika is, of course, a classic mage, or witch, or something, wizard. And each of the eight magical mistresses is ve very distinct in design, and each of the designs fit the stage they're part of. Although I would say this, that two of the magical mistresses, like Dodeca and the boss of the Toxic Sewer, I believe, they could f easily fit as world masters in a Mega Man game, with some changes here and there. 
Um, now for the most important part, or one of the most important parts, the stage design. Well, even though this game has about seven conventional stages, and the eight non-conventional one would be the gravity ship, the developer introduces the new gimmicks and mechanics and reuses them in new ways, so it really makes them unique and stand out. As each stage has at least two new gimmicks that it introduces and uses. Like the Sky Fortress had both the clouds and the fans. The Marine Base had, um... Okay, these are Gemini Glides. Going back to the point, the water stage had, of course, those ocean currents and some of the spikes. Um, the Deep Forest had the wind and flowers. The Power Plant had the lasers and the switches. Magma Factory had those bombs and the fire. The Frozen City had the teleporters for some reason, and of course, ice physics and the water. Toxic Sewer had the water, but well, well the... Of waterfalls that could push you back. The gravity ship of course had the gravity gimmicks, moving gravity switchers, and those temporary platforms which will blow up eventually. Now, at the sound of the stage, we have the Sky Fortress, which is the, tr the traditional sky stage, marine base, the outdoor water stage, deep forest forest stage, power plant, electricity slash base stage, magma factory, a fire stage, but not really a factory stage. The power plant fulfills the factory stage more in my, in my own opinion. The Frozen City being the Ice City stage, the Toxic Sewer being the Water Sewer stage, and the Gravity Ship being the Gravity stage. But still, I quite enjoyed going through all these stages, and truth be told, I kind of enjoyed the gimmicks more so compared to most of the gimmicks provided in Dr. Wily's Final Attack. Overall, I would say, even the stage design, starting from the intro stage, overall I like it more than what the stage design offered in Dr. Wily's Final Attack were. However, I will say that some of the stages can well, they get quite long. I wouldn't say they drag on, thankfully because they're two or three gimmicks, and they're introduced and reused in different ways, combined with different enemies and whatnot. But they can dra get quite long, with being 10 to 15 minutes each, whereas the Mega Man stage in most fan games would be 5 to 6 to the minutes at most. So it can go up to a bit 2 to 3 times the, in terms of length in, in Mega Man stages. 3 times if you're a newcomer like I am, or 2 times if you're used to the stages. So there is that, so it feels like you're playing a game that's at least 50% longer or 100% longer or double in length compared to a normal Mega Man game in that regard. So I, I forgive the developer for having two fewer Wily for, uh, Fortress stages. After all, they're twice as, much, twice as long, so the first the SR Fortress stage can count as two of them, the second one is two, so we end up with about five stages after all. Move left on Wagma Factory to... Hmm, I'll need to investigate that. But otherwise, the stage design was pretty fun, and there was only the gimmicks were always introduced in a safe, controlled environment, and slowly, gradually increased the difficulty as we got used to stuff. Now let me take a look at the gra magma factor and see if I can replay stages. Oh yeah, I can. That's neat, I can use it to just uh, replay stages. Um, so I can just replay stages in order to get more credits or gems. I'm gonna see if how far I can go left and... Oh no, that's not what I wanted. I meant to go back to the map. There's what I was looking for. Um, oh boy, that, that background, oh. Okay, so there's one more stage, so I guess I'll have to interrupt my credit sequence. Whoops. Okay, let's go through Neon Hell. Oh boy. Okay, so this is going to be the toughest stage of the game, it seems. But overall, I like, well, actually, I'll do this later. Let me get out of this uh, very crazy background. I'll dedicate the Neon the uh, Hell level to in my next part for an extras. But overall I like the stage design and the bosses boss fights were pretty fun as well. Once again, I I like the boss fights more in this title compared to Dr. Wild's Final Attack. Because all of them, even though if they have a pattern, they always react to the player and force you basically, no matter where you are, if you're if you change where you're you are and during the boss fights, they will react a bit differently, which I do appreciate quite a bit. And the fortress stages were a nice anglimation of the previous challenges we saw before, and the final stage was also a nice remix of each of the challenges. Though if there's one thing I've noticed about this game, 
is the fact that each of the bosses seem to be easier than the stages preceding them. For Namor of the Sky Fortress and Lily of the Marine Base, well, they're about the same difficulty as the stage preceding them, but from there on out from the second and third sets of Magical Mistresses as well as the Fortress stages, the boss fights, for, in my mind, are a lot easier than the stages preceding them. Especially considering there's no penalty for losing, you don't lose gems and you have infinite lives, and your health is restored. So there's that. And the music was pretty fun as well. Personally, my favorite track would be probably the final SO Fortress team, SO Fortress 1, and the Magma Factory. I, I would definitely listen to them on loop. Really, if there's one thing that puts this game just below Dr. Y's final attack, it's the absence of special weapons. In Dr. Wally's final attack, we had a great arsenal of 8 special weapons plus an extra ability. But in this game, by defeating each magical mistress, we don't get anything at all. Which I wish there was some abilities you could unlock, because special weapons are one of the reasons I like to replay Mega Man games. Because they allow a lot more flexibility while going through stages. When I only have the Mika Buster or Mega Buster, there isn't that much flexibility. Especially considering I don't really have charge shots either, so I can only rely on the pea shooter with 3 shots. Although this game was designed around it, because most enemies in, in this game only take 3 to 4 hits to destroy, barring certain tougher enemies. So, there was a, a balance for that. If there's, other, if there's one other odd thing I noticed, I did some digging around in the music folder, and apparently there is a musical track for the Magical Mistress intro team, like a Roadmaster intro team. But when I played through this, I never saw any intro, intro uh, cinematics for each of the Magical Mistresses where they teleport in and pose and move out. Strange. So overall, I would rate this game to be about uh, at least decent and above average, and maybe even good in some regards. I would rate it just below uh, Dr. Wild's Final Attack, but it's very close by. If this game had special weapons, I would definitely rate it above Dr. Wild's Final Attack. Oh, not and almost forgot to mention this, the graphics are definitely better. You saw how awesome the graphics are, or were, in the Marine Base and Sky Fortress, and the level consistency is mostly kept over here. I like the ba background uh, details, and they make each level feel a lot more distinct, from the Iced Up City and the Frozen City, the heat uh, radiating in the background, the magma factory causing warping, etc, etc. So overall, I quite enjoyed this game, and I would recommend it to others. Well then, in the next part, I'll be going through the Neon Hell. Well then, thanks for watching, and have a nice day. Toodles!